got the 5060 Ti details. You can buy a 9800X3D without the heatsink and AMD, please. Oh no, this is bad. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, February 27th, 2025. And I wanna remind you again, tomorrow we have our giveaway of the RTX 5090 PC that's gonna be taking place over on our Twitch stream. Yes, roughly around the same time that AMD is gonna be having their little announcement of their RX 9000 series chips. So you can come hang out with us while you're watching that or, you know, might be a little after that happens. 3 p.m. Eastern is when we're drawing the winner for that PC and then we'll have another one to give away afterwards. So we'd love to have you over there again, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. But let's go ahead and talk about the bottom of the range of the RTX 50 series. We now are getting more details coming out about the RTX 5060 Ti and the specs surrounding that. It looks like this is gonna be the GPU that has 180 watt TDP. So a little bit cooler than previous releases, but hotter than the 4060 Ti. However, it also will likely come in with the eight and 16 gigabyte V RAM situation that the 4060 Ti also had. We're expecting this thing to come out sometime in April and it's expected to have significantly faster VRAM speeds coming in at close to half a terabyte per second as opposed to the 288 gigabytes per second that you could find on the 4060 Ti thanks to the GDDR7 memory that's on the 5060 Ti. So this isn't likely to scratch everybody's itch, especially if they continue with the pricing that we saw with the 4060 Ti. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that NVIDIA hasn't really uh, at least MSRP raised prices on their GPU. So if they announce 499 for the 5060 Ti 16 gig and then 399 for the 8 gig, I don't know how well those are gonna sell, but obviously we don't know much about AMD's competition at that level of GPU for this generation just yet because we're only expecting them to have their mid high end of announcement that's taking place tomorrow. But I know that no matter what GPU you're slotting into your system, your RGB is probably probably out of control, which is why you need to check out today's video sponsor. PCs are pretty cool, huh? You know what's not cool though? downloading a ton of different softwares from different brands to make all your lights look the same. That's where Signal RGB comes in with both an easy way to control your PC's RGB and as the sponsor of today's video. Signal RGB's mission is simple and even right on their website, control and sync your RGB with one free app. As the leader in RGB control software, Signal RGB boasts an impressive roster of over 100 compatible hardware brands, including Corsair, Logitech, Razer, Thermaltake, and more. I'm also probably not the first guy you've heard talk about Signal RGB, but if I Damn, go check them out. Either way, tons of people have been using and talking about Signal RGB, so it's safe to say you can agree with us that they're a trusted resource by everyone from industry professionals to brand leaders. My business manager here has actually been using Signal RGB for his home PC for a while. Before recently upgrading, he was rocking a few different hardware brands in his PC and he got tired of watching his computer cycle through the whole rainbow while three different softwares booted up until everything was nice and purple. Now. Even though all his RGB is one brand, he still finds it easier to just use Signal RGB. Their sleek and simple interface allows you to easily customize your entire lighting scheme from one central location, whether you'd like to keep it simple with a static color, add in one of many effects, or even have lighting patterns display across your components. It can all be done with a few clicks and all for free in a lightweight software. And while everything I've mentioned is free, if you want extra goodies like game sync and audio visualizers, you can try Signal RGB Pro for just a few bucks a month. Download Signal RGB today via the link in the description below and get your lighting under control once and for all for free. Huge thanks to Signal RGB for sponsoring today's video. Well, while Signal RGB can fix your RGB situation, NVIDIA is looking to fix their RTX 50 series. No, not the melting power connector. No, not the lack of stock. No, not the high prices. We're talking about the black screen issue. You might've forgotten about this. Uh, they had an issue where it just GPUs would turn off. You couldn't see anything and it was apparently being caused by the VBI. So people are reporting that their 5090s and 5080s have been fixed. They had the black screen, now they don't. And that's due to either a driver update or a BIOS update that's being rolled out for cards. NVIDIA saying that you can just get this fixed with the upcoming driver update. So NVIDIA at least fixing part of the problem. They haven't really talked about the melting power connectors that I've seen. They have admitted that they've had the missing ROPs on their GPUs saying that it affects a small amount of people, but no word on the melting power connectors just yet. And no official word from Valve on their upcoming 
upcoming VR headset, but we're getting more details coming out about this thing. It's known as Project Deckard, and you can essentially think of it as a Steam Deck that's slapped on to your face. It's supposed to be replacing the Valve Index, which is a headset that requires a gaming PC. Instead, Deckard is gonna have all of the processing built into the headset. And the details that we're getting around this is number one, they're expected to be launching sometime this year, probably late 2025. Additionally, they're looking to have in-house games and demos ready for this on top of having Half-Life Alex, obviously. And the price point's looking to be right around 1200 bucks. It's a very high price for a VR headset, but based on what we know, about Deckard kind of at this point, it's supposed to be higher quality than the MetaQuest 3 by a considerable margin. The processing is going to be quite higher than the MetaQuest 3 and it's going to be able to run Steam games that are VR. So it's going to have a pretty robust library and probably run SteamOS, which is uh, kind of incredible. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to need to save up money to afford that 1200 bucks. Hopefully Reese can help me do that with today's deals. <laughs> Thanks, Reese. If you want a deal when it comes to buying a graphics card or otherwise, AMD has a new bundle program for you, which includes various CPUs, GPUs, and laptops. If you buy some of these, you get Monster Hunter Wilds for free. I actually got this just yesterday because I picked up a 7900 XTX for testing here at UFD Tech, and it came with Monster Hunter Wilds, so I got that for free. I also got a free power supply with it. The price point wasn't too bad for the 7900 XTX. It was below the regular MSRP. However, what's above? MSRP is this new 9800X3D that Thermal Grizzly is selling. They're selling a half of a 9800X3D essentially without its IHS. Actually, that's not true. They include it with the shipping, but the whole point is they've delitted the 9800X3D for you and will sell it to you for the low, low price of, at least from my checking, $713. Now you might be wondering why are they charging so much for it? And that's because delitting an AMD CPU is not an easy process. Getting that solid to melt and come off and be able to actually remove it without damaging the CPU is quite an undertaking. So Thermal Grizzly doing that for you, it just kind of saves people the headache of potentially destroying their CPU and it comes with a two year warranty. This is a big deal. Now, Tom's Hardware's article says it's $599 with a two year warranty, but every single time I've checked and even tried to go through checkout uh, for this delitted CPU, it's been $713, not that uh, $600 price point. So I don't know exactly why uh, Tom's Hardware is saying it's $599, but reducing the risk when it comes to delitting the 9800X3D. They're expecting to do it as well in the 9950X3D, and you get the IHS included as well as the box with all of this. It's a good idea. It's not quite uh, the idea of Silicon Lottery back in the day, which sold you bin CPUs, but this allows you to get direct die cooling. It makes it easier if you're trying to do some extreme overclocking. This is an enthusiast, enthusiast level uh, situation here. This is not for the average consumer, but I'm excited to see that it exists. And I'm getting less excited for AMD's GPUs as the days move forward. We got final confirmed specs. Obviously, AMD could pull out a no use situation tomorrow with their live stream, but with high degrees of confidence, especially because AMD's promotional material has already been leaked, we kind of know what's going on with the 9070, 9070 XT and how they compare to each other. 9070 XT is expected to have 64 compute units. The 9070 is expected to have 56. We've seen this before with AMD with their Vega Gen generation, the Vega 56 and 64. And you can see on here all of the different details up to 53.9 billion transistors. GDDR6 memory not really getting that much faster at 20 gigabits per second. Total board power of 304 on the XT to 20 on the non-XT version. However, we're going to talk about pricing now because it appears that was leaked by Micro Center. They revealed the pricing of the models that they're going to have at their store. And I just want to remind you that the 64 compute unit GPU that had H HBM2 memory, which was stupid expensive at the time. This was a very high price card was $499. And then the 56 compute unit version was $399. So you knock 20% off the price to get the cut down version. And it was actually kind of cool because the Vega 56 sometimes could be unlocked to be a Vega 64 with just a BIOS modification. It was, it was a nice little situation. So remember that 20% discount for having eight 
fewer compute units. And according to uh, Micro Center's leaks, well, that sub $700 spec that AMD put on their slide is, is literal. It is one cent cheaper than $700. The 9070XT ASRock Edition going for $699, as you can see here on the left-hand side, and the 9070 going for $50 dollars cheaper, which is a savings of 7%, not 20% like it was in the past. If we're going to roast NVIDIA for doing these kinds of things, I think AMD is fair game here as well. The price point doesn't make sense in comparison to what they're giving you. If it's only a $50 price difference, that is not as good as it used to be, and they are increasing their margins on their lower end GPUs. But one of the things I want you to notice here is that yes, $700 for a GPU that's going to perform allegedly like a 5070 Ti maybe a little bit better. That's not that much cheaper than the 5070 Ti. And if AMD wants to gain market share, this price point probably isn't gonna do it for them. But especially, you know, we roasted the 5070 Ti because you couldn't really find it at MSRP. There was one model that was at MSRP. And what do we have here? One model at MSRP, and what do you notice? Yeah, there's 9070 XTs going for 11 hundred dollars. That is exactly the same situation NVIDIA found themselves in. If Micro Center's pricing here is real and is not just some placeholder nonsense, and according to what we've seen from leaked Best Buy listings and uh, uh, leaked Amazon listings, these prices are kind of all lining up to be 700 plus dollars for the third party cards. I, I, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> this is not quite where I would want AMD to be in order to be truly uh, a, a competitive GPU to NVIDIA. Are they gonna compete in performance? Most likely. I don't have a 9070 XT to really tell you. I'm not benchmarking one. Uh, AMD hasn't sent us one, so I, I have no behind the scenes knowledge on this. My guess is it's going to beat NVIDIA in head-to-head -head raster. That makes a lot of sense. But the problem is AMD has a stigma that they need to shake off. It doesn't matter how much people like me tell you that AMD doesn't have the driver problems that they once had and that they're actually reliable and that the ray tracing's getting better and that they're something that you should definitely consider if you're trying to get your best bang for buck. People don't listen to that. And so they have to overcome that with extra value. And I don't think $700 to $1,100 overcomes any of that. Let me know what you think down below in the comments while I look at what you said yesterday. We got Oliver Gasson saying less than $700 proceeds to be $699.99. How'd you know? <laughs> Goodness, yeah. Uh, and then we got Ployth saying, talk about the NVIDIA 5000 series crash slash black screen fix they promised the patch is coming this week. I did, you're welcome. We did cover that. And then Kev versus Pixel saying, AMD, less than $700. Partners and retailers sells for a thousand plus. Anyways, how'd you know? Goodness, guys. Oh, you guys all called in the, the comments yesterday. And then TPaz Machine saying, can't wait for Microsoft to charge for use of keyboard shortcuts or individual letters or a subscription to Control Plus V or something like that. I don't like the future. And then Mr. Grimsmith saying, I'll have to check sizes, but that framework mini PC looks interesting. I have a Zotac Z-Box from Yonks ago, never heard that word before, which can't handle Windows anymore, third gen Core i3 if I recall correctly, but if it can just drop a new board in it and keep the rest, then that's of interest. If not, I dare say I can get one printed that works for me. I mean, I don't think it'll fit in the Z-Box because one of the good things, and this is something I kind of want to retract from my uh, statements in yesterday's episode. I talked about how I didn't feel like like the framework desktop fit the ethos. And the more I've been reflecting on it, thanks to a lot of comments that you guys dropped, the more I realize actually it's pretty, it's pretty dang good for introducing APUs to the DIY market. I was thinking of it in terms of gaming desktops and that's not really what they're doing. They're bringing modularity and repairability to mini PC, something completely different. So I think the framework desktop nomenclature kind of threw my brain off a little bit. So I'm just gonna recant that a little bit. I do think framework desktop uh, definitely fits in here because number one, standardized mini ITX. This can fit in any case that fits an ITX motherboard. So that's little tiny boys, or even you want to put in a Lee and Leo 11, you could do that because it fits uh, with the ITX. Additionally, uh, standardized power plugs. You got the 24 pin power connector for the motherboard. You got the eight pin power connector for the CPU. Also has a uh, four lane PCI Express slot as well as standardized M.2 slots. Even though the Strix Halo APU is locked down with its memory amount and you won't be 
be able to change that. They did bring a lot of repairability and uh, modularity to the mini PC market. They also are selling the board by itself. For $799, you can get the 385 with a 32 gig RAM setup. For $1,200, you can get the 395 with 64 gigs. And for $1,800 or 1700 bucks, you can get the 395 with 128 gigs. And then print your own case or put it in your own uh, case, like get the Fractal Terror or something and put it in that, or get like some really mini one that like you could 3D print your own, or you could just, you know, use a case that's lying around. This is actually really intriguing. And I think that I uh, was not quite as uh, gracious as I should have been with Framework yesterday. And then King Heavy Metal saying Framework should sell a 99 watt hour battery that can fit in their case. I would love that. I would love that, especially if the motherboard had like a plug for it where you could plug in the battery. That'd be nice. If you could plug in the framework battery to the desktop, that'd be cool. I don't know if they sell 99 watt hours. I don't think frameworks batteries are quite that high capacity, but if you could plug in the framework battery that is included on the 16 or the 13 or the upcoming 12 into the desktop, I think that'd be dope. And I'd, I'd like that. And I'd like to end this episode of Hot News here. I'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs>